Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Ask Amber, and in this video, I'm continuing on on showing you how to put an avatar in Unity from Blender and get it all set up so that you can upload it to VRChat. So let's get started. In the last video, I showed you how to set up everything in Unity, download VCC, and get it all ready to import your avatar. And so now it's time to import our FBX into Unity. When you go to export your FBX, as you can see, I've already exported a version of FBX, but there was something really important that I needed to do that I didn't. Now, this isn't going to mess up a whole bunch of things in your project or anything like that. If you want to have an easier time doing fizz bones and doing add-ons and things like that, you want to have your avatar scaling set up properly so that when you import things that you can drag them onto your avatar and they won't be totally huge they will be the correct size and in order to do this what you're going to want to do is have your scaling applied to fbx units scale and i also make sure that my apply transform is on so as long as those things are checked then you can go ahead and export your fbx this way i like to leave my blender project open in the background or at least have it available to open back up because sometimes i'll need to go back into blender and go back to unity back and forth depending on if i like missed some weight painting somewhere or i find something is wrong with the bones or anything like that so now that i have my fbx exported out of blender properly before I drag that into my assets folder, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly open up my textures folder. And as you can see, it has the few things that I added from the last video. And I'm going to bring all of my textures in. So I'm going to go into that textures folder that we created in our previous series. And I'm going to select all of these files and I'm going to drag them right into my textures folder. Once that's done, you can see I have all of my textures here, but I want to do one extra step. I'm going to format all of these because I'm going to be using 2K textures for everything except for my normal maps. And on those ones, I'm going to make them a bit larger. You want to keep your texture size as small as possible just so that you don't have too much information for people to download and you don't create a lot of lag within the game. I do like to have my tattoos and my tattoo maps like the normal map for it and everything to be a little bit higher quality because usually they have a lot of detail but for a lot of things you do not need high quality PNGs so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of my textures that I have here and it will bring up the texture settings for these textures so I'm going to leave everything as it is but I'm going to go ahead and click alpha is transparency that way on these ones that have the transparency PNG they won't make this weird background and you can actually see very clearly what's going on and then I'm going to have their max size stay at 2048 and I'm going to apply and once that's applied you can see now all of the PNGs look normal like they would in your browser which is much better I had applied all of these textures to my normal maps as well so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna control click all of my normal maps that I have in here and I'm also gonna click my tattoos as well because I would like those to be a higher resolution and I'm going to switch their max size to 4096 which is 4k this will give your avatar a lot bigger of information but with more detail becomes a bigger file size so just keep that in mind it's completely personal preference whether you want that little bit of extra detail or whether you'd rather have an optimized avatar for me with the normal maps and the details and the tattoos i would like to have a higher quality avatar for this one so i'm going to go ahead and leave those at 4096 and i'm going to click apply now that all my textures are set up i can go back to my main assets folder and i'm going to go ahead and import my fbx now so just go ahead and drag that fbx that you created in blender right into unity now because in blender i had added some of my normal maps to my avatar already this warning will pop up and it's it's basically saying that your textures are not formatted correctly as far as the normal maps so I'm just gonna click fix now and that will automatically solve all of those problems and make sure that the normal maps are marked as normals in your 
materials. So now if I click on this FBX, it will automatically go to my materials page. You can just ignore this for now. We're going to come back to that soon, but we're going to start with the model tab. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on legacy blend shape normals. Now, if you don't do this, it's not the end of the world because when you upload it, the new SDK will automatically check this on because if you're doing certain blend shapes or you're doing facial expressions, sometimes your normals will just look really weird, which means sometimes you know there'll be glitches on your avatar like some parts will get dark or some normals will look weird or your materials won't look normal so this will fix all of that so just make sure that this is fixed because if you run into your avatar looking weird whenever you turn on blend shapes it's most likely legacy blend shape normals is unchecked so I go ahead and check that first and then I'm gonna move over to rig now for rigging it's automatically set to generic and I'm going to go ahead and change that to humanoid and I'm going to click apply you don't need to touch any of these other settings and then you just wait for that to apply once that's applied you can click configure and it'll open up this new window for you I'm going to make this a little bit bigger and as you can see because I imported the textures first she does have all of her textures applied and don't worry even though they look weird we're going to fix all of that up later but we're just going to work on her rigging first. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that all of these are aligned properly. Usually everything is set up correctly, but a lot of times the chest won't be written. So I'm just going to go ahead and search for chest and then I'm going to select that as this bone so that it knows what bone is the chest bone. The left hand and the right hand almost never have anything wrong. If you discover something wrong or these bones are not applied later on, you can come back in here and apply them all, but they're usually automatically applied. But on the head, usually the jaw will pick whatever is the closest bone and you don't want to have anything for the jaw because a lot of times it will mess up your visemes so just make sure that the jaw in the head section is set to none so it looks like all of this is set up now so I'm gonna go ahead and click apply once that is applied I can go ahead into this next tab over muscles and settings and it will pop your avatar down into this pose right here and you can kind of check and see if all of your bones are working properly with these sliders so I can do like open and close and it looks like I have an issue here if you look at it here it looks like my ears are not connected to my head they are connected to what looks like my hips so this is a situation where I need to go back into blender and select the bones properly and make sure that they work so let's do that right now okay I've opened back up my blender and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on my armature right here and I'm gonna click tab to go into edit mode and then right here I'm gonna go into my little green man armature and when I scroll down under my hips you can see the ears root is under hips and not under head and we're gonna fix that right now by making sure that this is selected and as you can see it'll select it in the main window here we're going to go down to this little bones icon and we're going to click on the relations tab and once that is down then we're going to go into this parent and we're going to actually select the head so now it will be parented under the head and as you can see it's out of the hips and if we toggle down spine chest neck and head you can see the ears root is now connected to the head and sometimes this can happen with the hair like as you can see here I have a hair root already but let's say that I just have all of these hairs connected to the head when it comes time to put a fizz bone I don't want to have to put a fizz bone on every single one of these hairs so let's say that I don't have this hair root bone which as you can see is selected right here what I would do is come into my armature in edit mode find my head bone and then I would just extrude this head bone using E. So I'd select E and then Z to make sure that it goes straight up and down. It's not going to go side to side. And now I have this bone. And what I'm going to do in my bones tab is I'm going to rename this as hair root. And up in my armature, you can see the hair root is parented under the head bone already but I want to make sure that it's not connected so I'm going to uncheck connected that means I can move it around and it won't move the head bone at all so if I were to move it at all you see it moves independently of the head bone and it gives you a little dotted line to show you where it's parented but I'm going to leave it where it is for now and then if I needed to let's say that all of these hair strands were not connected to this hair root they were just connected to the head what I would do is I would select a hair strand and then down here I would make sure that it's parented to the hair root and each one of these should be parented to the hair root and then the hair root itself is parented to the head and that will make it so much easier to add fizz bones because you can just add one fizz bone to this hair root and it will add it to all of these instead of having to do each one individually I'm gonna go ahead and delete that new hair root bone that I made using X 
I'm going to exit edit mode and now it's ready to re-import back into Unity. So I'm going to make sure everything is toggled on just like I would. File, export, FBX. I'm going to just replace the same exact FBX that I had here before. I'm going to make sure my FBX unit scale is selected, that my apply transforms is selected, and that I don't have selected objects on because I want everything here to be exported. And I'm going to go ahead and re-export this FBX. Now I don't want to just drag my new FBX into the folder. I want to make sure that I go ahead and replace this within the file system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the FBX that's already in my folder and I'm going to click show in Explorer. And this is going to bring up my Explorer window. And this is the file system for this entire Unity project. And as you can see, it's highlighted right there, tutorialmodel.fbx. And I'm going to bring up my other tutorial model. This is where I keep all of my original assets, like my textures and my FBX. And I'm going to go ahead and control C to copy my tutorial model FBX from here. And then I'm going to go ahead and select inside this window and control V and paste it in here. And then it's going to ask me if I want to replace the file in the destination, which I do. Then I can go back into Unity and it will reload that FBX correctly. Now, as you can see, it messed up all of my bones in my system. And that's perfectly fine. Most of the time when you re-import a model, if you're making changes, you won't have to do this because if you're just making regular changes, a lot of times it'll just re-import normally with no issues. But a lot of times when you change the actual bone structure, it gets confused and doesn't know what's going on. And so all you have to do is change from humanoid to none click apply and then change it back to humanoid, click apply again, go back into configure and just add your chest and jawbone again. I'm going to go into my head, select the jaw as none, and then I'm going to apply that. And now when I go into my muscles and settings, you can see she is no longer all messed up and in really weird positions because a lot of times doing stuff like this will make Unity very confused about why you changed your bone structure. So now I can test when I go open and close and it looks like I missed something else as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and go back into Blender and very quickly reweight paint these items as well so that it works in this model. And this is really good to do first thing to make sure everything is working because as you can tell, it would be really annoying to make this stuff happen after the fact. It looks like these are part of the choker and they were not correctly attached. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my armature and I'm going to select these random pieces and I'm going to go into weight paint and just fix that up really quick. As soon as I color them red, you can see they snap right back to the neck and they are no longer there because they are added to the neck bone. So now because that was just weight paint, it should apply back in Unity perfectly fine without having to redo the structure. So let's just make sure that that works. So I'm going to export once again my FBX, make sure that all my settings are correct, make sure that everything is turned on, and click export FBX before you bring it back into Unity. So now that that's exported, I'm going to go ahead and once again copy my FBX and bring it over here and paste it in here, replace file in the destination. And then I'm going to open up my Unity. And as you can see, it didn't mess anything up this time. But when I do my open and close, as you can see, everything is as it should be and nothing is out of place anymore, which is perfect. I can also do a whole bunch of different movements just to make sure that everything is going well. You can also kind of check for clipping in these sections, which is really nice. And it looks like everything is good. So I'm going to click on done there. And now I'm going to export the materials out of my FBX before dragging it into my scene. So I'm just going to select on all the materials. They're the ones that look like this ball right here. And once all of those are selected, I'm going to right click and I'm going to extract from prefab. Now this is going to bring up a folder system of my assets package. And because we created our materials folder already, I'm just going to double click on that and I'm going to select that folder to extract them into. Once that's done, you can see you have all of your skin meshes available right in here. You can go ahead and click this little arrow and close that up. And now if I go into my materials folder, you can see all of my materials are here and they have, for the most part, the textures all added to them. So now it's time for me to take my tutorial model FBX and drag her into my hierarchy. You could drag her into the scene as you see she's here, but I like her to be at 000 for convenience. So I just drag her right in here and she will be in the position and rotation right in the center of my project. This just makes it a lot easier for a lot of different things. And don't worry, I know the materials look very strange right now, but it's totally fine because we're going to be working on all of those in a later project. But the last thing that we're going to do in this video 
is we're going to add our basic avatar descriptor to this avatar. So I'm going to make sure that my tutorial model is selected and I'm going to add a component right here and I'm going to type in descriptor and there it is right at the top. I'm just going to go ahead and click on the VRC avatar descriptor and we're not going to go too much into the avatar descriptor yet, but I am going to first set up my view position. So I want to make sure that my little gizmo right here is turned on so that I can see all of the things that I'm working with. Once you have a lot of dynamic bones or you have a lot of components on your avatar, audio or particle systems, this is kind of nice to be able to toggle on and off. For now, I don't have anything on here. And so it's really easy to find the view ball, but you won't be able to see your avatar descriptor review ball if this is off. So make sure this is toggled on and I'm going to go right here and I'm going to click on edit. And as you can see, there's a little gizmo up here with the little ball. So I'm just going to drag that ball downwards. So by default with your little gizmo thing right here, when you move your avatar around, sometimes it's really hard to get a perfect side on or front on view. So in order to do that, I'm just going to click this little white cube, which is the orientation. And that's going to change this into a different orientation so that I have a perfect side view. And if I click Click these little arrows right here it'll take me perfectly to the side view so I'm just going to use the side view as a guide and as you can see this orientation does clip quite a bit more than the other orientation which hardly clips at all so if you're experiencing a lot of clipping then just go ahead and click this little ball again to get back out of this orientation but this is still an okay orientation to select where I want my view ball so I want it directly in between my eyes and I usually put it about halfway out the nose so now that that's in a perfect place I'm going to go ahead and click return and that will stick that view ball right where I want it. Now we're going to go into more about the avatar descriptor in a future video, but this is how you would import your model into Unity from Blender. Get all of your materials set up so that you can start getting it ready and make sure that everything is weight painted correctly. Now, even if you have all of your materials set up and everything, if you do have to re-import your model because you extracted all of your materials from your prefab, it should re-import perfectly just like this. And as you remember back in the beginning, when we went to the materials tab of your FBX, all of these were empty, but because we extracted them from the prefab, now we have all of our materials all lined up nicely like this. And if I wanted to replace one of these materials as the default material and still have my avatar re-import from Blender with the new material on it, all I would do is drag it in, which I will show you now. Let me just create a new empty material. And I'm going to call this material tester. And when I go back to my assets and click on this folder, I'm going to just lock this folder here so it doesn't go away as I change folders over here. So I'm just going to click this little lock button up here. So this stays in place and I'm going to go back to my materials and I'm going to find that tester material that I made and I'm going to actually put this on my face. So I'm going to switch this out for the face one. And then once I click apply, you can see it put that new material that's basically just all white onto my face. And now that is the default one. So even if I re-import this model back into Unity from Blender again with a new FBX, it will still remember that the face material maps to this new tester material. I do this a lot for repeat models. So like if I'm making a model and I know that I already have like a hair texture or an ear texture or something like that that I've used before that I really like, I will save that material to use for next time and then I will just remap it and take the hair material that I know that I love and replace that with the hair material that came with the avatar and then I'd have one less material to set up. So that's really convenient, especially if you use the same body, if you use the same face, if you use like similar hairs, if they have the same hair texture. You can use this really easily by remapping your materials to other materials. And if you want to go back, you can definitely go back. I'm just going to redo my face right here, put that in there, apply. And now I have my face back. So that's really a helpful way of doing it without messing up your re-import from Blender. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this new material that I made. I'm going to go back to my assets folder. I'm going to unlock this page that I'm locked into. And now I am ready to move on. I hope this video was super helpful for you. Let me know if you have any questions. Drop them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all and I'll see you in the next one.